for us. Do you trust me? Yes. Is trust important to you? Think about your daily activities. How many of your interactions depend on trust? Or put it another way, is trust important in how successful you are in your daily activities? Are you a teacher, an engineer, a planner? Maybe you're a trainer, a doctor. Does the, does the, the, the trust that you build with the people you interact with affect how you uh, succeed every day? We know that trust is kind of a unique feeling for humans, although some people argue that animals have trust too. But we trust a little differently, and we all need trust. And it's important uh, that we understand the trust relationship that's built. And because of that trust relationship, it is important, I believe, we all need to strive every day to improve on our trust relationships. And how do we do that? Well, there's lots of different ways, and if you look at skills and, and, and um, uh, behaviors that we can use to de develop uh, trust, uh, I'm going to focus on two of them. Uh, I'm going to focus on listening skills. I'm going to focus on sharing your passion with the person that you're communicating with. Now, Sharon, last week, or last time I spoke, reminded me and us of the importance of listening. Listening is one of the most important skills that we can use to make sure we engage with people. How many of you have been in a conversation where you've been asked to give uh, your opinion on something and someone cuts you off? I was in a meeting just earlier this week, in a planning meeting, where people were asked to give their opinions on something, and the leader of the group interrupted everyone because they thought they knew the answer, or they had their perception. Immediately, the attitude of the room shut down. People were no longer willing to share because they were cut off. In your conversations, do you let people share their stories. When we're listening, you make eye contact with the person. People like to know that you're communicating directly to them. And eye contact is one of the ways that we do that. Do you repeat back to the person what they said? That skill lets them know that you listened to what they said, you heard what they said, and it also allows you to get back to the same point. And it's not uncommon for people to hear parts of your story, but they don't hear all of your story. And they'll pick and choose pieces out of your story that they think are important, but it may not be the points that you're trying to communicate. And if you will listen to what people say and communicate back to them, you can get on the same page. Uh, interrupting, again, is, is really important. And you know, is there a skill where you can listen? Um, Nelson Mandela has been known worldwide as one of our great leaders. And a reporter asked Nelson Mandela, why is it that you're such a great leader? What skills do you believe? And he said he went back to his childhood because his father was a tribal leader, and he remembered two things. The first was, in all those meetings, everybody sat in a circle so they could see each other. They could communicate directly. The second thing he said was, my father always spoke last. Now, why is that important? Well, in those meetings where you're interrupted, and you're a leader, and you come into a meeting, and you are a planning meeting, and you set the agenda, here's the problem, and here's what my solutions are, what's your feedback? People aren't really willing to give a lot of feedback, because you've already established what you believe and what you expect the outcome to be. If you give people the opportunity to share their story, you get there all kinds of information, all kinds of new information, viewpoints that you may have not thought about that may be important to the resolution. So speaking last is a great skill. It's difficult, especially if you're a leader, to learn to speak last. But you gather a lot of information, and you know where everybody's at, and you can 
incorporate a lot of new ideas that way. The second skill is share your passion. Why do you get out of bed every morning? Why do you go to work? Why do you do the job that you're doing? I'm a huge Simon Sinek fan. I think there's Simon Sinek fans in the room as well. But he wrote a book, Start With Why. And, the, and Simon Sinek is an author, a speaker, a consultant that goes around to successful businesses and learns how they communicate. How do they communicate within the organization itself, and how do they communicate with their customers? And what he says is people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Or another way to say it is people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And think about your relationships. What you want is that trusting relationship. You want people to know how much you care. Now, the the tough part about that is if you ask people why you do what you do, it's very hard for them to verbalize it because that inner uh, feeling of why we do what we do is very hard. It comes from a different part of the brain than our communication, and you have to practice it. But people want to know what you do. A great story to this, when I went from private practice to working for a company, one of the benefits was dental insurance. We moved to Kansas City. We had three young children. We got to have twice a year dental for these kids. It's not that we didn't do it before, we were good parents, but now we, my wife went out, she's a planner. She went and interviewed probably seven different dentists. She finally chose one dentist. I said, well, that's great. We can go and have kids have routine dentistry. I said, well, there's a bit of problem. This dentist is not in our network. I go, what? That's part of the reason. She says, well, it might cost us more. I said, why? She says, well, I interviewed all these. This dentist made me feel like I and our family was as important to them as it was to me. Just, your family and I are going to see this dentist. You can go wherever you want to, but we're going to see them. <laughs> and I would encourage all of you to do a couple things. Number one is practice being the last to speak. And practice your passion and communicate it with those that you're dealing with. And I think you'll be successful in those relationships and build that trust.